So in this question, we are told that the scalar projection of vector b onto vector a is equal to 2. Now, we've learned that the equation for this scalar projection of b onto a is given by this quantity, or this equation, I should say, here. And if we look carefully, one of the things we're going to need to calculate is the magnitude of vector a, which is given to us right here. Let's take a look at the equation giving us the magnitude of vector a. So if we assign labels to the components a1, a2, and a3, then we can simply plug into this equation to get the magnitude of vector a. So let's go ahead and plug in the given values of a1, a2, and a3. So we've plugged in those components and then we just want to simplify underneath the square root. We have the square root of 9 plus 0 plus 1, so of course the magnitude of vector a is equal to the square root of 10. So, with that magnitude in mind, and the fact that the scalar projection of b onto a has a value equal to 2, what we'll do is plug in. We'll plug in 2 for this quantity here, and then again for the magnitude of a, we're going to plug in the square root of 10. And so here is where we are in the problem. Now, the final thing to contend with is the numerator. We have the dot product between vector a and vector b. We've recopied vector a right here. So what we'll do for vector a is we'll go ahead and we'll plug that in. So we have the vector 3, 0, negative 1, and then that is dotted with some unknown vector b. We can put this all over the square root of 10. Now we wish to find vector b, and there's going to be a lot of possible answers, but before we find it, we might wish to multiply both sides by the square root of 10, so that we can cancel that on the right-hand side. Great, so now what we'll do is create symbols for the components of vector b. So for example, for the x, y, z components, in order to do the dot product, we could call the x component b1, the y component b2, and the z component b3. And now we're going to perform the dot product. Now it's very easy to do this, isn't it? Because you just take the x components of the two vectors and you multiply them together. So you would have 3 times b1. Then you take the y components of each vector and you multiply those. So here we're just going to have 0 b2, and then finally we take the z components of the vectors and we multiply them, so we're going to have minus 1b3. This is all still equal to 2 square root of 10. So this is very good, and we want any vector. So what we could do, for simplicity, is we could let b1 equal 0. So what happens when we do that? We have 2 square root of 10 equals 3 times 0 plus, and we might also wish for, again, simplicity, to let b2 also equal 0. So then over here, we would have 0 times 0, and then we have minus b3. Now we'll just solve for b3. So we have 2 square root of 10 is equal, of course these zero out, so it's equal to negative b3, multi excuse me, you could divide, or I guess multiply both sides by negative 1, and you get negative 2 radical 10 is equal to b3. So now we have the z component, we also have the y component, and we also have the x component. So one potential vector for b would equal the x component of 0, the y component of 0, and then the z component of negative 2 square root of 10. So this would be an acceptable answer to the question. Now, we might also wish to produce a more generalized answer. So that's what we're going to do to kind of cap off this question. Let's just go back and snag this equation right here. To produce a more generalized answer, what we will do is we will let the x component of vector b, so let b1, equal an arbitrary symbol. So for example, we could use the letter s. Similarly, we are going to let b2 equal another arbitrary letter equal to t. So s could be any value and t could also be any value. What we'll do is plug those in to our equation above. So we would have 3s plus 0 times this t and then minus b3. Now of course the middle term zeroes out, this leaves us with 2 square root 10 is equal to 3s minus b3. We're going to solve this for b3. We could add the b3 to the other side and then subtract the 2 radical 10 from both sides. And we end up with this for b3. So in summary, we said b1 was s, b2 was t, and now we know b3 is equal to 3s minus 2 square root 10. So the most generalized answer for vector b, if you were looking for that, would be the following. We would have s, t, and then the z component would be 3s minus 2 square root 10. So this is the general answer for vector b. 
Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.